Let us pray. O God, our shepherd, you know your sheep by name and lead us to safety through the valleys of death. Guide us by your voice that we may walk in certainty and security to the joyous feast prepared in your house through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. I hope that you've enjoyed our service by the Senate staff this week. I know that in advance some folks said they're disappointed because they'd rather hear me. Well, at this point, I don't know what the Senate service is going to be about because I won't see it till late Saturday night. But I do know I'm not going to leave you without something from me this week. After all, if I skip a week, it's going to mess my YouTube ratings. Anyway, here we are in the Trinity Lutheran Church kitchen. And we're here because I decided to do something fun this week, something different. Since I couldn't bring you down here on Sunday morning because, well, it's not big enough, and even if it were, you can get three people in here safely with social distancing today. Um, this way, since I'm coming into your home, I can bring the kitchen to you. And so we can do something a little more fun today than our normal worship. Consider it like a children's sermon based for people who are children of any age. Anyway, um, during this shelter at home edict, I noticed lots of people are baking more, especially bread. And in the first couple of weeks when it was difficult to get bread, I'm sure people decided, well, if I can't get it, I'll bake it. And even now when I go into the store, there's pre plenty of bread, but it's very hard to find flour and some other baking items because apparently people are doing a lot of baking. And baking is a great thing. It's fun. I mean, after all, it's something the whole family can do together and afterwards enjoy the fruits of their labor. But at any rate, cooking and baking is something that I've always enjoyed doing. It goes back to probably about the time I was around three years old. I mean, I was special because my sister had to go to school when I was three, but I got to stay home with mom, and that was a really great thing. And mom liked to cook and bake, and one of the things I would do in addition to, you know, playing stuff that a three-year-old would play with was to uh, be in the kitchen with my mother, and she would teach me how to make things, and I could mix things, and I could pour things and measure things, and we just had a great old time, and we did that for, for, for many years. In fact, as I got older, mom still relied on me to help her in the kitchen, and I got very good at it. Uh, another thing is when I was in the Scouts, we used to bake and cook on our camping trips, and then I spent 10 years working in various restaurants. So my love for baking continues to just grow and grow and grow. I enjoy the cook, I enjoy baking, I enjoy creating things. And so I thought we would make some bread today. And what happened was a couple years ago, in fact it was September from the September issue, the September 2017 issue of Luther Living Magazine, there was a recipe. And quite often when I see in magazines and newspapers recipes that look interesting, I'll rip them out, right? And I'll put them away for a, a, a later date. And I seriously doubt that when I saw this, I said to myself, oh, someday there'll be a pandemic and you're going to be doing YouTube videos to get in touch with your members. I don't think that was in my mind. My thought was maybe someday it will be something to do with, uh, with uh, Vacation Bible School or some other thing in that line. Or maybe in children's sermon, I might break the, bake the bread in advance and bring it in and talk about baking it. But this is going to be a lot more fun. And this recipe was actually submitted by Kathy Baca, who is a member of Shepherd of the Hills Lutheran Church in Berkeley, California. Okay? And it's a very simple recipe. Basically, it involves flour, salt, oil, and water. Now, you can do, you can, you can use basically any type of flour you want. It could be you know, wheat flour, bleached flour, unbleached flour, all-purpose flour. It could be flour that's made from garbanzo beans, lentils. It could be spelt or millet. Not really sure what spelt or millet are, but they are in the Bible. Uh, and you can use that type of stuff. So I'm actually going to use my favorite flour here. And this is Trinity Lutheran flour. I'm going to hold it up for you. And it is the favorite flour of Pastor Andy, which you can see at the bottom. It says it's the favorite flour of Pastor Andy. Uh, you know, I think I got next year's Christmas card already. Anyway, we're going to use this. And I have my salt and I have my oil. I have my water. I have my measuring spoons. I have my, my pan and I have my bowl to mix the bread in. Now, the important thing, and I did this before we started the video because I didn't want to have to have you suffer through me singing happy birthday to myself two times in a row. I already washed my hands. Remember, always wash your hands before, during, and after your cooking. 
Uh, it depends what you're cooking. But anyway, uh, today we're just doing before and afterwards. Uh, but one of the things I've always enjoyed about being in the kitchen and cooking and baking is it always kind of reminds me of my mom. I always feel still somewhat close to her when I do these things, especially if I'm using one of her recipes that I grew up with. And so I always find that a special moment for me uh, to remember and honor my mother and still feel like she's with me in some special way. Uh, but today, this widow's loaves are based upon uh, a story in First Kings about Elisha and a widow. So, what we're going to do now is we're going to begin to make our bread. So, the recipe calls for a half cup of flour, an eighth teaspoon of salt, an eighth cup of water, and one tablespoon olive oil. Now, because I don't like to do things small, we're going to actually double the recipe. So instead of a half cup, we're using a whole cup. So let's take a whole cup of flour. There we go. Perfect. Then we're going to take our eighth teaspoon of salt, but because we're doubling the recipe, it's going to be a uh, quarter teaspoon of salt. There. Then we're supposed to use uh, one tablespoon of oil. And once again, because we're doubling the recipe, that'll be two tablespoons of olive oil. One, two. Okay. Now, the water's the crazy part. I've made this a couple of times now, and every time I do it, it never seems to be enough water. So instead of doing a half cup, which would be twice the quarter cup the recipe calls for, I'm gonna start with a third cup, and I got backup just in case this doesn't work. So now we're going to do this. So we have all of our ingredients together. Now it's time to get to the dirty work and mix our dough. See, that third cup still wasn't quite enough. The problem is you don't want to put too much in to start with because as I learned in a home ec class I took years ago uh, from Mrs. B, she was a, actually a member of my church too, so it was kind of nice to have class with her. We always had a special relationship after that for many, many, many years, is you can put it in, but you can't take it out. So we're not going to put too much water in, but we're going to add just a little bit more because it's just not, not congealing properly. Once again, if you can see in the bottom of the bowl, you still have flour that's just not joining the group here. We want all these ingredients to hug each other and become one. So I'll put just a little bit more water in here. And that'll make our dough workable. We're gonna get every, every molecule of salt in here, every molecule of oil, every molecule of flour. Yep, get it all in here and mix. Now, here comes the fun part. We're going to use this cutting tray as our kneading board. Now what you have to do is you want to put a little bit of flour on here because this dough is sticky. And if you don't flour the board first, the dough is going to stick to the board and it's not going to knead properly. So, let's take the dough on the board, and now we're going to start to knead. In fact, you can put a little bit of flour on top of the dough to help it. So, kneading is a process of actually taking your fingers and pushing it into the bread, then folding it over and over again. This gives the bread a certain consistency, and if it's a bread that has yeast in it, it also helps it to rise. This doesn't have yeast in it, so we're not gonna have to sit by and let it rise. The first time I ever made bread was when I was in youth group at our Savior Lutheran Church in Hannafield. We had a, a, a member who actually owned a bakery, and somehow the pastor got this idea that we would bake bread uh, and give it out to the members on Easter Sunday as they were leaving church. And the idea was to raise money for uh, world hunger. I don't remember which world hunger group it was, but it may have been Lutheran World Relief, 
we're not sure, but it was one of the hunger programs that was popular at the time. And we would do that in our youth group. We have about 20 people in the kitchen working. We'd make about 400 loaves. And we had a lot of fun doing it. We'd have to knead the bread. And of course, we had this huge glob of bread. We had several of them. And then we would have to put them and we'd put them back into the bowl and cover them and let them sit so they could rise. Now, if you notice that this is kind of sticking to my hand because I got all this dough on my hand, we're going to go back in and get a little more flour. We're going to use this to kind of get the dough off my fingers and then to, to then continue to knead this. I tend to sometimes use my palms instead of my fingers. I don't know why, it just feels more comfortable, but I do that. And when you're kneading bread, it's going to take about 10 minutes to do this. I haven't set a clock or have, have a uh, watch out here to, to, to do that. It's just I'm so used to doing things like that, I can kind of take a guess just by the way the dough feels as to, as to whether or not it is time to be baked. Now, the story of 1 Kings, 1 Kings 17, the back of this part of the story is that God had caused a drought to fall upon uh, all of Israel. And the reason being was that King Ahab had come to power. And I think the Bible said King Ahab was, was worse than all the terrible kings before him. And he married a uh, foreign woman whose name was Jezebel. And Jezebel actually worshipped uh, the Canaanite god Baal and also his consort Asherah. And so Ahab began to worship Baal instead of worshiping the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, which we know from many other Bible stories is a bad thing to do. So God had Elijah speak to him, prophesy to him, and say, at this point, there will be no rain. There's going to be a drought and a famine because of the drought, because of the king's unfaithfulness to God. Now, the problem is when you tell the king something like that, and a queen who's vicious like Jezebel was, the two of them decided that they would probably want to kill Elijah. Or, yeah, Elijah. So Elijah got out of town fast. God told him where to go. And initially, crows were feeding him. They were bringing him food and stuff. But as the drought got worse, God then told him to go to a certain place to meet a certain widow. And that's where our story picks up today. So, then the word of the Lord came to him at once at Zarephath in the region of Sidon, and stay there. I have directed a widow there to supply you with food. So he went to Zarephath. When he came to the town gate, a widow was there gathering sticks. He called to her and asked, Would you bring me a little water in a jar so I may have a drink? As she was going to get it, he called, And bring me, please, a piece of bread. As sure as the Lord God lives, she replied, I don't have any bread, only a handful of flour in a jar and a little olive oil in a jug. I am gathering a few sticks to take home and make a meal for myself and my son, that we may eat it and die. Elijah said to her, Do not be afraid. Go home and do as you have said, but first make a small loaf of the bread for me from what you have and bring it. This is what the Lord God of Israel has said. The jar of flour will not be used up, and the jug of oil will not run dry until the day the Lord sends rain on the earth. She went away, and this Elijah told her. So there was food every day for Elijah and for the woman and her family. For the jar of flour was not used up, and the jug of oil did not run dry, in keeping with the word of the Lord spoken by Elijah. The story tells us of the wonderful promise of God, that when we have faith in God, we will always have enough. We may not have too much, but we will always have enough in what we need. I know right now we're going through a difficult time. Many of you are trapped at home and can't get out. You can't see friends or other family. And uh, you're not going to school. You can't go to the mall. You can't go uh, to the parks. And, and so it seems like a very frustrating, dry time. It's a, it's a time of drought for our social lives that we're experiencing right now. However, this drought will someday come to an end. And I would hope that probably sometime in the next month, this is you know, May 3rd, uh, sometime by the middle of the end of this month, we'll be relaxing some of these uh, some of these orders to stay at our homes, and things will start opening up again. And maybe we can even come back to church and start worshiping again. I, I can't wait till that day because it does get kind of lonely here by myself. Although people do call and check up with me, so it's not a bad thing. But it'd just be nice to have people here that I can see and talk to and 
uh, and do some wonderful things in, in church again the way we used to do them. Now, we probably needed this close to 10 minutes. What we're going to do now, we're going to take it and roll it into a ball. Then we're going to split it into two pieces, right? Remember I said I wanted to make you know, two loaves of bread. So once we make it two pieces, hopefully about equal size, then roll it into a ball a little bit more. Okay. But nice and smooth and round. Then we're going to put it onto the tray and we're going to squash it down until it's about a quarter of an inch thick. Now, this is not your Stroman bread or anything like that. This is going to be more like a pita, because that is the type of bread that the ancient people ate. And many people in the Middle East still eat this, and even our culture today. You can go to the store and you go buy pita bread, flat bread, which is very similar. So we have one cake there, which is going to be for us, and then the second one is going to be for Elijah. Just in case he should show up. Once again, we want to stretch this out so it's about a quarter of an inch thick. Now, the directions say to preheat the oven to 400 degrees and let it bake for approximately 8 to 10 minutes, which is what we're going to do. I don't know about you, but when I watch a TV show and they do a cooking segment, I'm always amazed that they do this recipe. They, do, they throw things together in like five to seven minutes, and then they throw it into the oven, and seconds later they pull it out and it's baked. I mean, isn't that wild how they do that? Always wonder about that, but now that I'm a big YouTube star, I'm going to be able to do that myself. And so we're going to pull the big bread out. cool for a little bit, right? And then you have some nice bread. Now, you can do some wonderful things with this. We're going to take a taste of it right now. Mm. It's very good. So turn off a smaller piece. <laughs> so we can get through this video. Well, it's been really fun doing this little activity, and I hope you appreciate the fact that I have my kitchen, special kitchen robes on, and my special kitchen Pastor Andy hat. Um, before we uh, leave here, oh, and by the way, one of the things that bread like this is good for, um, it's good when you put some hummus on it, maybe the kids might want to put peanut butter, maybe some peanut butter and jelly on it, but anything that spreads would go on there nicely. You know, even even some you know cheese spread and stuff like that, or maybe just a little bit of olive oil you could dip it into, uh, like they do in, in, in some fancy Italian restaurants. Uh, but anyway, if you make this at home, I hope you enjoy it. If you're a young child watching this video, make sure that your mom or dad supervises you in the kitchen because you don't want to get burnt. Um, I've been working kitchens a long time, so I don't get I don't hurt myself too much anymore. Uh, but anyway, uh, we're going to uh, close with our our prayers. That's the other reason I want to do a, a special video for you because I didn't want to miss out on our, our prayers of our church because we mentioned the names of folks that we're memorializing and honoring this week, and that wouldn't get done if we didn't do this. So before we get into prayers, this please Almighty God of his great mercy to call in his church triumphant our fellow member, Elsie Hunsinger. Elsie was a longtime member here at Trinity, and this time services have, are, are Services have yet to be determined. At this time, we extend our sympathies to her sons, William and William and Clark, and to all the members of the Hunsinger family. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus, and for all people according to their needs. For all who gather to hear the voice of the shepherd and feast at his table, that you make them one in ministry to the world. For bishops, pastors, and all who serve as shepherds, that they remain faithful to the apostles' teaching and the breaking of the bread. 
for all who govern the nations and all positions of power over others, that they seek justice and welfare for all people. For all who live without adequate food, clothing, or shelter, that your abundance be shared among the people of the world. For all those around the world concerned about the coronavirus, replace fear with common sense, calm those that have anxieties, protect, heal, and strengthen those who come in contact with the virus, and inspire those working toward a vaccine. For all healthcare professionals, protect and guide them as they seek to bring health and healing as they risk their own health to curb the virus. For all who are working in with the public, to go food employees, delivery people, gas station attendants, cashiers, store clerks, utility workers, police officers, and postal employees. Strengthen and protect them as they continue to provide essential services to us. For continued guidance for President Trump as advisors during these difficult times, we continue to pray for the safe of his troops to remain deployed throughout the world, especially those who are known to us. Andre Flamini, Lily Kramer, Dean Henderson, Brian Bow, and Jordan Wilson. For all who walk through the valleys of fear, loneliness, violence, loss, or illness, guide and watch over our loved ones in need of your healing presence as we lift their names before you in our hearts and out loud. We pray for anyone who is having trouble with their allergies, lungs, or breathing. Lord, through your indwelling Holy Spirit, become their breath, that the bronchial area controlled by your spirit may be relieved, the bronchial swelling go down, and free breathing be restored. For all the saints who followed Christ, the shepherd in life and in death, we give thanks and praise. Make us faithful in our calling all the days of our life, until we dwell with them in your house forever. This morning we thank you the life of witness of Linda Maylot Davies, Lillian Cahoot, Etta Mayer, George and Thelma White, Alex and Blanche Bowers, George and Helen White, and Elsie Hung Singer. In your hands, O oh Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy, through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.